thank you very much for the introduction. I would like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to speak. Um, so today I'm going to I'm going to present a partial holomorphic uh, isomorphism between two moduli spaces. So we have the moduli space, the Dolbo moduli spaces, and I'm briefly going to define of um, of stable uh, Higgs bundles. Um, and the Dirac moduli spaces of uh, irreducible connections, and they are related um, by by the non-abelian Hodge correspondence, that is a diffeomorphism. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to explain a um, partial holomorphic uh, um, holomorphic isomorphism between these, be mainly between Lagrangians. So um, that would be a holomorphic uh, Lagrangian correspondence by holomorphic between each of these stratification and moreover I'm going to, uh, in the end, I'm going to, uh, to, to make a definition of the semi-classical limit via geometrical, um, via uh, a geometrical uh, um, definition. So um, uh, first I'm going to start by introducing the notation and maybe some of the, um, I'm, I will spend some, some time uh, reminding the old results. Um, Uh, so, so I'm. So all of, of this talk is going to be with the group SLN of C. Maybe I will use SLR of C, and uh, C will be a um, projective algebraic smooth curve. So you are SLC versus SCL. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the, the most important part, so, yeah. Um, <coughs> um, and um, so, um, so, so, I'm, so, so I'm going to choose a spin structure, and that is, is going to be L, a line bundle, so that L squared is uh, canonical. And because, because I'm working with this group, my, my vector bundles, well, I'm going to use uh, uh, both notations, E and V, to denote holomorphic uh, vector bundles of, uh, of rank R and um, uh, degree zero. But also phi is going to be a traceless fixed field. So let me briefly mention these two moduli space. So on one side we have the, the Dolbo moduli space consisting of um, of stable Higgs pairs. And phi is a map from E to E tensor Kc, canonical. Um, that is an OCI homomorphism. And then uh, I, want, uh, I want to introduce also the Dirac moduli space consisting of um, irreducible connections. And nabla is a map from E to E tensor Kc. That is a C homomorphism. So this, th these two spaces are homeomorphic. by the non-abelian Hodge. Let me also briefly mention the, um, the Hitchin vibration. So we have the Dolbo moduli space and we have a vibration over the affine space, the vector space consisting of all the sections of the pluricanonical. And in this case, I consider traceless Higgs fields. So uh, is mainly going to map this, this, this table Higgs into, um, into the spectral data determined by the characteristic polynomial of phi. And this is an element in the Higgin base. Excuse me, oh. these irreducible connections, are they flat or not? Flat. Flat. Yeah. Uh, it's holomorphic. It's a holomorphic, yes. Oh, 
Okay, so this is um, the, this is the, the general framework. And next, what I'm going to do is to introduce um, that there, there are two Lagrangians in this space uh, that mainly give a kind of affine parameterization of the Hitchin pace. And one will be called the Hitchin section. And the other one will be the upper moduli. So uh, before, because I, 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 I kind of talked about this uh, a while ago, I, I, this, <laughs> yeah, maybe I, <laughs> I just, oh no, um, maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm just going to. <laughs> so, so, so mainly, um, I want to, to define the uh, section inside the Hitchin uh, moduli space, inside the Dolbo moduli space. So what I will consider um, are vector bundles that are split bundles. So they split in, uh, th these are line bundles, powers of, uh, of the canonical bundle, half canonical. And X minus is this uh, matrix consisting and PIs are, are, are just constant. So X minus is a matrix with just uh, non-zero constants on one diagonal lower. And X plus is going to be the transpose. So it will it'll have the same diagonal upper. Um, H is going to be the commutator between these two, X plus and X minus. So that will make an, um, a diagonal matrix consisting of um, values uh, I mean, uh, decrease by two every step. And these are the generators of the SL2 representation to SLR. And now if I consider Q to be, um, oh, uh, to, to, to be a section here, I mean, to, to be just a vec uh, to be a vector here, this means that it has components and it consists of uh, dif uh, of differential, Q2 will be a quadratic differential and so on, QR will live in, uh, will be a section of the pluri canonical. And now the elements of the Hitchin section consist of, um, of E0, so they always have this, this, this split uh, vector bundle, and, and, um, and phi of Q that consists of X minus, and uh, I'm going to add, uh, so, so x plus will be nilpotent. So this means that the power will cancel. So all the powers will actually will go one diagonal, um, will, will go one diagonal. And I will just multiply by q's each of those diagonals. So that will be my phi of q. That is just an, well, has an upper triangular, um, upper triangular part. Uh, uh, and, and lower uh, um, diagonal consisting of this uh, just um, uh, constant. And, and it is uh, not difficult to see that actually this is a stable Higgs bundle. Um, and in fact, uh, X minus is a stable Higgs bundle on E0. So it's a point on the Dolbo moduli space. And this is known as the Hitchin section. And it is a section of this vibration in the sense that it intersects every fiber of this once. It's a, it's a section on, uh, in rank two, but uh, otherwise it just intersects the fiber once. But if you apply it twice, it doesn't give you identity. Um, so now I want to introduce another um, um, a, a Lagrangian inside the Dirac moduli space, that is the upper moduli. So I just wrote a definition of, of the upper, um, and this consists of a filtration of uh, vector sub-bundles. And the uh, bayliss and Dreamfeld definition says that um, um, Nabla is a, a connection is an upper if, well, I'm, I'm using the decreasing filtration, um, if it satisfies the Griffith transversality condition. Um, and this will induce an OC linear map, and this means a Higgs bundle, on the quotients. And the condition is that that is isomorphism. So this being an isomorphism implies that, that these quotients um, are, um, that, that this is a full flag. 
So, so the the rank goes uh, every step by one. Uh, but yeah, so what I'm going to, um, what I'm maybe I'm just going to int briefly introduce now a new definition. So let me define here. Um, Uh, for for any lambda in H1 of CKC, so this is just a complex number, I want to define a one parameter family of filtered extension to be F lambda this filtration. This is the vector bundle, and maybe I'll just write in words. Um, so I, I do have a, flu, a full flag, and uh, the, 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 the last condition is fulfilled, so I do have an isomorphism between the ratios. Tensor KC. And finally, I want to mention a starting point. And the starting point of this, I want to mention the first one here is going to be uh, just the power of the half canonical. So it's just going to be this. So for example, uh, for example, in, in, in R equals to 2, I have that for every lambda, a, co a complex number. Um, then there exists um, um, a unique uh, filtered extension like this uh, that is given by the short exact sequence. Sorry, you mean lambda doesn't play any role in this definition. The lambda plays no role at all, yeah? Uh, well, the. So. Ah, ah it extensions. Yeah. Yes, it, it extension classes. So, um, so, so, so many. This, this, this will give the first. Uh, this will give the first ratio, and then by this condition, that is quite a strong condition, you can compute all the ratios. So this will be like the first, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to sandwich like in rank two and construct another and another exam, another and another filtered extension. And right, so I want the v, uh, the, the last one to be to be the the last term, the the vector bundle to, to be the last term of the extension. Um, and uh, uh, because I want to I want to, to consider one example, let me introduce one definition. Um, so uh, um, I'm going to recall um, projective coordinate system. So mainly, if, if, if my Euler surface uh, decomposes into a union of, of, of open sets, then I want that the transition functions, these are the coordinates on the open set, are going to be given by Mobius transformations. And such a such a co projective coordinate system always exists. Because, for example, one comes from the universal uh, covering, that is just the upper half plane. Uh, so let me, and, and, and this matrix, I'm, a, I'm asking to be in SL2 of C, this matrix, say, B, C, D, alpha, beta, in SL2. So I'm going to introduce coordinates now, and I'm going to introduce Z alpha, beta to be transition functions So the last one has a beta, but there is no beta. It's no sound, the last beta. It will be the alpha. <laughs> 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 what? Coordinate change. Coordinate change, you understand. No, matrix A, B, C, D depends on the beta. You change from C, B to C, B. That's a good sense. So this is the, the, mo the Mobius. Yeah. 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 As, 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 yeah, so that there exists, so, so the universal covering is the upper half plane, and if you take Z, the local parameter here, this will induce on this Riemann surface such a coordinate system, but you'll, you, you'll have many of them. 
So, so. Okay, um, so this is a definition, that's a definition. Um, so, so Z alpha beta are the transition function for half canonical, and mainly they are linear in this Z beta, so in particular the, the, the first derivative will, will vanish. Okay, now I can maybe state some theorems. Um, maybe. So theorem one, um, this this was was proved uh, with Motohiko Mulase, 2017, I think, um, is that for any lambda uh, that is a complex number, then uh, there exists a unique, non-trivial, uh, one-parameter family of filtered extensions. This is the filtration, this is the vector space for the vector space being, uh, I'm going to denote V that is for, for, for this E0. That, it, that was that uh, direct sum of line of, of uh, half canonical power so. So this is a statement about the filtration and now I want to put uh, some connections on this filtration. This is a theorem two. And maybe, maybe I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to, to mention some things. So I can, I can, I, I will give you the, court, the, the transition functions for this V lambda. So let, let me call F alpha beta gamma um, to be the transition functions. Um, this is lambda, um, yeah, maybe it wasn't a good notation. Um, to be defined as exponential of h times logarithm z alpha beta times exponential um, of lambda times d log of z alpha beta uh, times x plus. So this is um, so, so, so these are the transition functions for v lambda. And the second part of the, the statement says that, well, yeah, when, well, this is uh, the, uh, at, at zero, you just get back. Uh, I mean, th this will make the transition function for, for e zero. That is also my notation of e zero. And finally, that, um, that t plus one over lambda times a Higgs times times, uh, so, so if I start with any element on the Hitchin section, then, then this is an upper um, on the V lambda, on the V lambda. Okay, so maybe, um, I mean, the, so, so the, this is a statement of filtration. This is a statement about actually, well, you can quite identify this filtration. Um, so maybe, I mean, this, 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 this first matrix, um, I mean, sometimes probably we denote it like Z alpha beta to the H to be to consist of exponential of H times logarit uh, logarithm of Z alpha beta. And this is just the diagonal matrix consisting of uh, just, yeah these powers on the diagonal. So this is the first part. And the second part, um, um, the second part consists of, 
of, um, of another matrix that has well identity on the diagonal and um, and on, 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 on each of other um, on each of, of uh, upper uh, diagonal entries we'll have powers of the lambda uh, plus the, uh, the derivative of z alpha beta as, as I said uh, because x plus it was nil potent so when you do write down down, down series uh, that uh, you, you'll obtain such uh, such an object. Uh, as, as I said, this, uh, these are linear, so that will be just uh, just a constant. So when you'll when you'll uh, when you'll multiply these two, you're just going to see a matrix that has these entries on the diagonal, and then upper, and then uh, yeah, and then upper uh, uh, the, the consisting of the derivative and powers of lambda. Okay, so um, now I want to I want to talk about something that. Uh, is in between these pictures, um, and I will come back on these theorems. Um, so maybe, maybe I'm going to use this port here. So I'm going to introduce the notion of uh, well, I'm going to talk about Hodge moduli space. So let me introduce this uh, Hodge moduli space of lambda connections consisting of lambda. Uh, a vector bundle, maybe I'm going to call it e lambda, and then the connection here. So this is the moduli space of the lean lambda connection. And uh, the rule is that uh, the, the, the Leibniz rule the lambda li like li Leibniz rule is that this is lambda times df times s plus f times this of s and f is just a holomorphic function and s is just um, just a section of the of the vector bundle. Uh, um, um, Usually, uh, I, I like to use the notation V lambda for the uh, connections, but uh, it's okay. Is that, a, excuse my, is that a one half or a one over lambda in part three? It's one over lambda. So lambda is not zero. Sorry? So we're assuming lambda not it's zero. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, uh, yeah. Yeah, so the, the, I, I'm going to, to, it's one over lambda, sorry. I'm going to, so, so this is kind of a family of, yeah, I'm going to, to come back on this. So lambda is non zero. Yeah. Okay, so um, so 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 the Delin put these two definitions of the uh, Higgs bundle and connection into this uh, definition of the lambda of the Delin lambda connection via this. And we can notice, I mean, when lambda is zero, then you have this, this becomes a Higgs bundle, while if lambda equals to 1, it becomes a connection. So we should think about this as being, um, I mean, this, um, if, if, if here is the moduli space, if this is the moduli space of the, um, if the, this is the Dolbeau moduli space and this is the Dirac moduli space, this is kind of in between. Uh, so this corresponds to lambda equals zero. This is the fiber over lambda equals to zero. So it's lambda inverse of zero. And this is the fiber over lambda equals to one. And in, in between there are these lambda connections. Now there, there exists a sister action on the Higgs field on the on the Dolbeau moduli space, but mainly it will be induced from the sister action on the hot moduli space. So let me talk about this. So we have a sister action on the hot moduli space, and the way it acts, I'm going to take t a non-zero parameter and uh, look at the connection, and I'm going to send it well into this and um, and the fixed points of this action 
um, will be the ones that are left invariant under, under this sister action. Um, so so uh, you can see that this happens if uh, this happens if if if, t if if lambda is zero. So these fixed points happen if and only if lambda t is t is lambda. So this means lambda is zero. Um, so 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 the fixed points are Higgs bundles, and they are they are denoted as uh, hot bundles. So I'm going to, so, so this is the, this is, this denotes the sister fixed points on the sister action on the Hodge moduli space. So, um, now probably I want to, I want to, to look at one example. Mm, maybe I'm just going to write here. So I have this, exercise that, that I did maybe two days ago. Um, so I'm going to save this notation up above. So this is uh, maybe yeah, a remark. So I'm going to start with phi of q on the Hitchin section. And then, then I have the following, that lambda uh, upper, v of lambda and d lambda plus phi of q is a lambda connection. So this guy that appeared here, if you multiply by lambda, is just a lambda connection. The second statement is that e0 comma x minus, so e0 was, oh no. E zero was um, E zero was the uh, split vector bundle into um, into half canonical powers, and x minus was this constant lower di yeah one diagonal below is a fixed point uh, for um, yeah is is the fi if for this lambda connection. And uh, the, th the, the third part is that the limit when t approaches zero of t times lambda v, v lambda and lambda d plus phi of q, so these are just these uppers, but now they became lambda connections, is just, well, the, the same point, is the same point. And finally, um, the fact that The fact that uh, the graded Hodge bundle associated to this to this lambda connection uh, is 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 going to be e zero and x minus. So these are some statements we can easily check. Um, yeah. So what uh, I mean the way the way to see this, uh, what the C star action does. Um, well, I'm I'm just um, I'm I'm just going, going to apply the theorems above in order to to prove this statement. So z alpha beta we said that these were the transition functions. Uh, for half canonical, and sorry. What's the difference between two and three, or, or, oh. or maybe what is the meaning of two? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. Well, what? Oh, this is the six, the fixed point. So if you act here by t, and uh, you you you. Um, Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, did I? Sister. Sister. Yeah. No, it's, it's okay. It's okay. No, no, it's okay. I just don't understand. So, um, 
Fixed okay. points are uh, obtained by t equal to zero limit. Yeah, so... Right, right. Three, there's no difference. It's, it's okay. Right, I mean, but I, I, I will mention in the end that, that, that this will be the same thing, but, okay. you know, I just wanted to, to give you the, the computation here. Okay, so z alpha beta are the transition functions for, for this. So I can take like a times z alpha beta, where a is a non-zero constant, and this will be the same transi I mean, the transition function for that. So um, maybe I'm going to denote like f alpha beta, and this is the a lambda. And these are the transition function corresponding to this, um, uh, to this v, v lambda. And um, so this, um, yeah, so what, what, um, what, what happens there that if you, if you, if you, if you just multiply by a non-zero constant, the second part, the second matrix will not be affected because um, because this a is just a constant, so it will be killed by the by the d. So you'll have the same thing, but only the the first part will be affected in the first statement of the theorem. So, for example, I'll I'll take that I'll have that x of uh, h times um, log of a times that alpha beta will just be the sum between. Uh, uh, will, will, will be the product, sorry, the sum and then the product between this. So for example, this will be probably my notation a to the h and this. So, 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 so I'm, just, I'm just saying that this is just going to be a to the h and this is just this diagonal matrix that has just powers of a on the diagonal and then f alpha beta, the old ones. And this just comes from here. Okay, so when, when, I, when I write, I mean, I'm going to take, um, so I'm, I'm going to act by t, and when, when I write my, my t times phi, well, t times phi in this new transition function, probably what, what, what will happen is that I have to multiply by this new uh, a to the h, and have to conjugate by that. So, this will, this will uh, give you that, uh, so it's the same Higgs field, T of phi, but it's written as um, a, uh, to, uh, a to T uh, and then phi of A to 2i minus 2 times qi. So this, this is just the vector q. I mean, q, q consists of the vector qi of the uh, differentials. And it's just going to have this this constant. So, so if if, if yeah. Um, so um, so so for example, if q is equal to zero, um, then then if you look at the definition of the Hitchin section, this will uh, phi of q will be just uh, phi of zero will be just x minus. So. Um, Sorry. Uh, what happened to here? This uh, eight, eight, eight raised to h into. Uh, what is zeta? Zeta alpha beta? There is a term missing here. Zeta alpha beta? Ah, ah no, no, it was. Just the first. Oh, for first term, there's a region, it's not. And the second term, no. <laughs> there will be a second term. Just expand on the first term, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, 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 uh, nothing, so, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't know. It's good, good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, so if, uh, if 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 this q is the is 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 the origin of the Hitchin pace, then 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 this is just x minus, and you can see here that for if if you choose a to be the square root of t, then this is going to be mapped in the same in the same point, so therefore this x minus comma e zero is a C star uh, fixed point. for q equals to zero. Um, while if, if q is non equal to zero, uh, then um, if, if you choose again a equals to the square root of t, um, then wh what, uh, what will happen here is that this will be just phi of, of um, and then this will be t i minus one qi. So when you take the limit when t equals to zero, now 
the Qs will be, uh, will be killed, so the only one surviving will be X minus. So this proves that the limit um, when T approaches zero of this is going to be the same point. Because, uh, because, because i is going to be bigger or equal than 2 in my notation. So all the differentials will come with t times q2 and then t squared, q3 and so on. So you can take the limit at 0 and obtain this q minus. So this proves, uh, I mean 1 just is a reformulation of the first theorem and this proves 2 and 3 together. Um, and now you can use probably theorem number 1 to prove 4. And I probably will not do that, but I can explain how to do it. Uh, is it okay, or questions? So, uh, what is the graded Hodge bundle? Well, um, yeah, probably. So, um, I will have to compute the ratios of this uh, filtration. And if you remember the definition of the, this uh, one parameter family of filtered extension, this came with these fixed ratios. So these fixed ratios, in the end, they were known and they were powers of the half canonical. So, um, so to compute, a, um, yeah, so, so it's, it's an easy computation to see that, uh, that the associate, the, the graded Hodge bundle from, from theorem, co consequence of theorem number one, uh, of, of, of this is, is, is just this because uh, because yeah you, you'll have that you'll have that at each each step you'll have to take these ratios that will be like um, um, k uh, half canonical k to r minus one or r minus three and so on and then you have to twist by the canonical so that will be an isomorphism in the end and this x minus says that you have just this uh, constant on lower diagonals and they will give you the isomorphism between this. Okay, so this was just an exercise in order um, for, yeah, to, uh, to get, uh, uh, in order to, to get some terminology. Um, okay, so let me, let me mention some theorems now. Yes. I mean, the, yeah. Uh, the so 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 here, this is just the uh, yeah the um, exterior derivative. Yeah. But did we did we choose some special property of the of the transition functions, or any? We choose any transition <coughs> functions. It's a canonical shift, so D makes sense. So, somewhere there at the start, we chose some transition functions somewhere. The, the S alpha beta. Is this going to depend on the choice? Well, you have the F alpha beta and the S alpha beta. Uh, or zeta L, I don't know. Oh, zeta, yes. Uh, it, uh, so, so it's going to, to probably depend on the spin choice, right? Or so this zeta alpha beta came from the, yeah, spin structure, but you choose just the cord projective no, coordinates. Don't you need a solution of Hitchens equations to start somewhere? No, no, it's projective structure. So right. The projective structure. Right, I'm not using the solutions yet. You get yet. symmetric power of a cell to, to dimensional presentation, get flat connection, yeah. I mean, here, here, here on, on this board, I kind of defined everything I needed for this. Ah, you started with a complex projective structure? Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So that was the... So right. the so if you choose a different complex projective structure, you'll have a different base point there, is that Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <coughs> Okay, so let me now me measure some theorems. Um, should I do that? Maybe, maybe I'll just erase this board. Um, okay, so. 
Uh, so, 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 so theorems, and this is uh, mainly the work of Carlos Simpson, um, is that uh, for every lambda v lambda that is a Hodge bundle, um, so for any lambda dealing connection, then there exists, um, or oh, maybe I should state fix a lambda first, fix a lambda on the base. So I'm just going to fix a lambda and look at the fiber. And I, I will choose a, a lambda dealing connection, then there exists a unique section. C star goes to the Hodge moduli space, passing through lambda, the lambda, and con the connection. The, the limit when t goes to zero always exists. Um, um, the fixed um, So for um, let me let me just denote of M Tolbo of C star consisting of these fixed points P alpha where alpha is a class of variation of host structure. Then for any for any point P zero here, then. Um, if, if I look at, uh, at the inverse, I mean, if I look at all the points that are, uh, all the lambda, uh, yeah, all, all the points are fixed under, under this action in P0, and I restrict to lambda equals to 1, this is a holomorphic Lagrangian. Well, that's a different sigma, right? Uh, you use a sigma for section. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry? No, no, it's just on the left, you say. Sigma with half of C star to Oh. Okay, now it's sigma with some C yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Number two, you meant sigma. Section is not sigma. Uh, you just uh, confuse the conf uh, this, uh, notation. You say. Yeah, uh, sorry, I, I, I just switched the, the all notations in terms of H bar and sigma uh, just, ju just before. Yeah. 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 yeah, you erase that sigma over there. Here? Uh, oh. Here? But then what? Okay. Sigma is a number to math. Limit, limit. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe this one. In section, in harmonic section? Oh, okay. No, maybe C star invariant section. No? Yeah, yeah, it's a C star invariant section. So, so, okay, so um, what, what do I want to say? Sigma of uh, lambda, whatever, is equal to that limit. Yeah. This is the sigma, yeah. Okay. So all, all the points that are fixed under this, um, all the, so, so for, for any, so, so, so here I have the set of all the fixed points that live in the Dolbo, and for every point here, I look at the um, at all the points that get fixed under this, and, and this, this will be a holomorphic Lagrangian, and this will 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 give the stratification of the Dirac moduli space. So this is a holomorphic Lagrangian vibration. Um, So all the points that are C star fixed points under this under this action. Okay, so 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 there exists this uh, there is the this uh, Lagrangian vibration on the on the DRAM, and you can do the same thing and restrict mainly to to the lambda zero, and you'd obtain 
uh, vibration for um, um, so maybe I'm going to to just write it that if you restrict to lambda equals to zero you'll obtain again a Lagrangian vibration of the Dolbo moduli space so these are all the Higgs bundles that have that correspond I mean that are in the fiber that, that have this the, the same Higgs uh, point so um, maybe. Okay, so, so mo moreover, this is a holomorphic Lagrangian on the Dolbo moduli space. So the moduli space, the Dolbo moduli space breaks into this P alpha of uh, Uh, of into into this th this is a, strati a holomorphic stratification of Lagrangians. Okay, so maybe now I can I can mention the the theorem. So the theorem. Uh, can I point out one thing, which is the the, the the idea that that would be like some kind of vibration. I think that's a conjecture. Of 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 uh, sorry of the DRAM or or the, of total ball. Of the DRAM. Of the DRAM. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's a, uh, the subspaces are Lagrangian, but... Uh, That's what she meant. It's a vibration by holomorphic Lagrangian. Yeah. Not the holomorphic vibration. It's not holomorphic vibration. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, not the, holomorphic the, 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 the statement that those are closed subvarieties, for example, is, is just a conjecture. They're, they're not closed here, but... Right. Uh, it's just a conjecture that they're closed here. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, I see. So maybe... Vibration by holomorphic Lagrangian. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's something more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, same thing in here on the other side. Well, they're they're not they're not closed. Well, I mean, no, I don't think it's correct to say. It. I mean, those subvarieties are not closed in that on the Dolbo. Mm. So I'm not sure what vibration means, but I mean. <laughs> okay, then, then, then I just, I just leave that holomorphic Lagrange. <laughs> okay, so, so, so the theorem, um, um, and this is with Laura Fredrickson, George Kidonakis, uh, um, Rafa Matteo, Motohiko Mulasen, and Antinetsky in maybe it was 2016, was that uh, this uh, so. So if, 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 if I restrict to P0, that is E0 x minus, and we proved in that lemma that this is the fixed point, right, this is the fixed point, I mean, um, and what, th this is a fixed point of the Hitchin section on the Dolbo, and also on the, on the upper moduli. So this is what that lemma says. Then, then, then these, two, the, these two Lagrangians are biholomorphic. So this is this Higgs point when lambda equals to zero. Are by holomorphic via Gaiotto conformal limit. Ga Gaiotto's conformal limit. And yeah, we we basically we basically yeah saw this correspondence between the 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 the, the Higgs bundle on the Higgs section and 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 this upper and that this is the limit of the this is the conformal limit of Kyoto. Okay, and moreover, it was generalized by Collier and Wentworth. A year ago, to all such fixed points. So this is the theorem Collier on one word. Just 
2018, that for any point um, that is a fixed point under this uh, C star action, um, then and any alpha variation of host structure, then there exists a biholomorphic correspondence between so these two fibers, these two Lagrangians now, uh, one on the Dolbo side and the other one on the Uram side. Are, um, are biholomorphic Lagrangians. via Gato's conformal limit. And this Gato's conformal limit is explicit. So you can see from this, um, so you can see that, the, oh, and, and the methods here that were used are similar to the methods that were used uh, uh, by us in, uh, yeah, I have very short time, um, are similar, to, is similar to our technique. And you can see that in, in, in that case, this corresponds to the longest, to the full flag, like the, uh, I mean, the, very, the, the, the upper corresponds to the full flag. And um, um, you can, uh, you, I, I, I can try to explain, for example, uh, the on, on the opposite side, you have the shortest flag when E is a stable Higgs, uh, when, when E is a stable vector bundle. So if for a stable vector bundle E, then you have that E phi uh, is in the Dolbo moduli space uh, for any phi. So if E is just a stable vector bundle, then this is a stable Higgs field for any phi. And E comma zero is the fixed point. But you have the cotangent fiber of E over the moduli space of stable vector bundles of rank R and degree zero that is contained in the Dolbo and it's a Lagrangian. So this will be the corresponding Lagrangian. And um, for every stable Higgs, uh, for, for every stable uh, vector bundle, there exists a unique Hermitian-Einstein metric. And once you take T to be the churn connection corresponding to that Hermitian-Einstein metric, uh, the unique churn connection, uh, then you get this, maybe by Narasimha Shashadri, E corresponds to D. And mainly the fact that E was a vector bundle of, um, of degree zero, it tells you that, that this has curvature zero. So mainly the solution of Kitchen's equation split, kind of decouple, into the curvature zero part and then the part where phi, uh, uh, the, yeah, the phi and phi daga is zero, and that can be done uh, uh, because, yeah, uh, phi can be uh, diagonal on, on this uh, Einstein Hermitian metric. So this is kind of a short proof for these opposite cases. Uh, in the case of stable vector bundle and in the case of uppers, and in between, it's, it's, uh, it, the, the proof is very similar. Um, anyway, so maybe, um, maybe, maybe I'll try, to, I'll try to, to give the general picture here. So, um, so this is the, the Dolbo and this is the DRAM. And 
here. Um, well, here, here is, uh, is the corresponding Lagrangian of the uh, Dolbo and the Diram, and you have this kind of slice in the Hodge bundle. Um, but this, th this, this is saying that, 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 that this is just trivial. So it's going to be a product between C and then uh, one of these uh, Lagrangians. So um, if I want to define, um, a, let's say, a, semi a, geomet a geometric semi-classical limit, I can, I can start from a lambda connection, go to, uh, to the, to the Dolbo side by this, and then project on the Hitchin base. So that is, uh, that is a geometry definition of a semi-classical limit. There is another definition coming from physics when uh, this is more like the limit when h bar goes to zero of, yeah. I can try to define a semi-classical limit of this. And the theorem is that these two agree. These two definitions agree on moduli space of uppers. And that was so that yeah. So ma mainly, I can I can define a map from the DRAM to the Hitchin base via this uh, uh, well stratification, or that is trivial. And uh, this sorry, yeah, uh, it's 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 yeah, it's holomorphic. Pr it's probably on on each slice. Or um, it's it, it, it's not on, on the whole thing. Yeah. It's not on the whole thing, <coughs> but it's probably holomorphic. I mean, it's between these Lagrangians, but it's yeah. So probably going to be on the slice, or but it's not on the whole. Th this is not holomorphic on the whole moduli space. And here, yeah. So probably I'll, we'll stop here. Thank you. I have a question, which is, so at the, at the start you got a similar type of correspondence, but it depends on the choice of base point that was the projective, complex projective structure, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Do you have a, an idea? Because th this one depends on the solution of Hitchin equations, right? Uh, this, uh, this, right, right. Uh, I mean, it goes through, yeah. So do you have an idea of how those two compare? Can you, I mean, you could, because you're, you're ahead your formula with D right. plus... Uh, Right, I mean, the, the, the this is also explicit. Group. Yeah, I mean, yeah, can well, I guess this... Yeah, I, well, I, I think it's a similar formula to that, d plus 1 over lambda of phi. So it's here you... It's not the same unless... The, it's mean, not the it same. Would, it, maybe it's the same if... Is it the same if the complex projective structure is the one given by the, like by the uniformization? Yes, yeah, good. That's yeah. exactly the case. Ah. Yes. But so if the complex projective structure is not the one given by uniformization, then do you have a comparison uh, map oh. between them? And for example, is it going to be linear on this on this vector space? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know.